guys, Steve Davis here, Stillwater Woodcraft. We're back today, gonna work some more on our base camp shelter. Wanted to introduce you guys to my new buddy Zeke here. He is a, an original mountain cur. He's a little feisty wanting to run around the woods right at the moment, but he's now 11 weeks old. So he's joining me today. He's gonna be my new woods buddy. Okay, so we're working on this shelter, and when we left off last time, we had started to weave the walls and the roof together, and I have a lot of that done now. But on my way in there, I'm stopping to pick up some material that I had stashed from a previous time out here. And what it is right here is just a bunch of bark, the sheets of bark, okay? What I got is just a piece of canvas here that's also going to be part of our raised bed when we get to that point and I'm going to use this to gather my leaves for the thatching and to carry this bark back to our shelter all I do is lay that out this bark isn't the most solid but I ripped it off in as big a pieces as I could Looks like Zeke's going to help us a little bit. This material here, I think I had planned on using it on the side wall. I'm not sure that's exactly what's going to happen. Watch out, bub. Not sure. But I think this is going to be pretty heavy. So, we're just going to wrap this up. Like that. I could tie this with a tump line if I would have thought to bring one with me. And now I can just pick it up. Oh, guess what? I can't pick it up. That's heavy. So, what I'm going to do, since the ground's covered in leaves and won't wear on our tarp too bad, I'm just going to use this to slide it. So, we'll get this drug over to the shelter area and we'll get working on it. was not the easiest thing in the world but nobody said this wasn't going to take some time and some effort so I'm going to get a quick breather get my gear around and we'll get to work on this shelly that's a good boy that's a good boy you want to help me? Huh? Help me? All right, guys, we're back here uh, working on this shelter. And when we left off, we had started to weave the side in. And you can see, I got the sides done in the top. And all I did, you know, we bent them pieces across. All I've been doing is just bringing this stuff in here and weaving it in there. However, it wants to however it wants to fit. Now, 
thing we got to think about when we're doing this is trees grow they're made to catch water so we want them to not catch water so anything we want to put on this we're going to want to put upside down so what would have been the bottom of the tree now becomes the top of our thatching okay that bark I hauled in it's not going to work out the way I wanted it to do on the side. So, over to this side is where our raised bed is going to be. And it's going to be up against this log. So what I'm going to do is use that bark on this section of roof above our raised bed. That way, it will uh, reinforce the roof in the important part, I guess. Um, when we start to bury this, we're going to add layers of leaves continually for as long as this shelter is going to be here. But initially, you know, we're going to make this, it's going to be real fluffy. It's going to start packing down. And we just need enough stuff on here to hold it from falling through because eventually it will turn into one big solid mat after it gets rained on and such for a while. So I'm just going to take this bark Big of pieces as I can get. I'm gonna lay these on here. That piece is very good. I'm gonna have to tuck some of this stuff out of the way as I go. I'm gonna lay these on here in layers. So the next one is over top of the previous one like shingles on a roof so it will shed water. And I think I got enough to cover a good bit of area above this bed. I really wish I had enough to do the whole shelter with this, but I don't. So we're going to use it in the most important spots. I don't like waking up in the middle of the night with water dripping on my head. Some pieces of this are better than others. We just about got our bed area covered. putting this on until I run out of bark and I'm going to do as much as I can do of it and then we're going to get uh, into collecting enough debris to cover this whole thing. Hey guys back around here to the front we got our bark put on back here where our raised bed is going to be. Now I added a pole into the center of this. This is a pretty good span and this roof isn't a real steep angle so when it gets a snow load it's going to have to carry some weight. So I added this pole in here and on top of that I may either close half of this in for additional protection and shelter or I may 
get a piece of canvas or something, whatever I can come up with, to cover this and make it so you can roll it up out of the way. I haven't quite decided yet. So the next step in covering this is going to be to gather a bunch of debris. So what I've done is just cut a maple sapling off that had a nice fork in it, okay, just to make a rake. And all I'm going to do is use this makeshift rake and start raking all these leaves up into a pile. I'm going to try to keep sticks out of it as good as I can for now. What them sticks will do is when they get wet, if they're sticking out the top of our debris and down to the inside of our shelter, water can travel down that stick. So we're going to want to make sure we don't have that happening. So when I get a pile of these raked up, I'm going to take my canvas here Toss it out on the ground. Don't want it break. All this on top of my canvas. Okay, now we need to think about how water runs here, right? It runs from the top down. So we're going to want to start our thatching from the bottom up so it sheds water like shingles on a roof. So what I want to do is start on the sides. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky to get these leaves piled up the side and they might have to be pretty thick. We can also add some sticks and stuff in there to hold them up until they get rained on a couple times and start sticking together. So I'm just going to gather my canvas up here. Carry it around to the side. Now you see where we dumped that first load, I dumped it kind of up on the wall and let it run down. What that's going to do is start letting them leaves get intertangled in the stuff that we had woven on here. And some of these little sticks, you know, will start to hold it to it. But we're just going to have to start building this up until we got it all the way to the top on both sides and then start the roof. So. We're going to be gathering a lot of leaves. Alright guys, I got six, seven loads of leaves dumped on here. We're starting to get all eight or ten inches. Now obviously this is a vertical sidewall, so these leaves want to start sliding down. And they're going to continue to do that until it gets, you know, congealed into that mat like, uh, like we're looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start laying a couple of the pieces like this up against it. What that's going to do is kind of hold that in place until you know it can all solidify as a thatching and then we'll just put another layer right on top of that and this will start acting like rebar. So now that we got it up this high I'm going to start across the roof that way you know the top layer is going to start falling down over the side it'll fill in that top corner so nothing to it but more leaf raking. See guys, I'm just walking right up the roof of this, dumping this debris on top, uh, slowly getting it covered. As you can see now guys, I got about a foot thick layer on the roof. I'm just going to take my rake here, kind of flatten it all out so it's nice and flat, doesn't have a bunch of ridges and valleys in it, and I can use the rake to push some of that up there and fill in some thin spots if I need to. So I'm going to stop here at about a foot thick. Now this isn't going to be waterproof yet. It might be water resistant. Okay, what I'm going to let this do is get dewed on and uh, get wet, you know, from the frost and the dew and maybe a rain here. 
and let this sink down and compress and then add another layer to it. So what we need to do now is go around the inside and check it for any uh, holes or uh, spots that don't look good, maybe stuff falling through. All right, let's move around here to the front. We're gonna start looking inside to make sure there isn't any big holes in it that we need to fill up and check the thin spots. Wanna find the stuff like this that's sticking through. Maybe there's some sticks and things sticking through. We want to tuck them back up in there. Uh, you can see here, one of our pieces come through. I just want to tuck it in. Get that all up out of the way so as this starts to stick together, that stuff will be stuck in it. Now back here in this corner, I can see where our rafters are laying on that log. There's a couple air holes in there. So what I'm going to do is just stuff them shut and I'm gonna let this go until this all congeals and makes a big mat, and then we'll add another layer as more leaves fall. Uh, this whole area right here, we've pretty much raked up and put on this shelter. There's a lot of green leaves on the trees yet, so you know that's gonna help us put a couple inches of layering on there anyways, just mother nature. So I think it's shaping up to be a really good shelter. The next uh, video in this series we're going to work on uh, getting our bed in here and our fire pit out front so we can get this thing heated and then we can start using this you know we to not make it all uh, you know work and stuff we can get out here and do some hunting and stuff I didn't stay in this shelter this has been Steve Davis with Stillwater Woodcraft I thank you guys for your views all your support we'll see you on the next one <laughs>